So as Chris mentioned, this we are doing Forgotten Faces of Titanic. And I always like starting off the program of giving Titanic its proper name. And I do this every time I do something related to Titanic, RMS Titanic. Now, many of us know that the RMS stands for Royal Mail Ship, that the Titanic had the designation to carry the mail of the King and Queen of England. But having said that, I'm gonna spend most of the program just referring to just the Titanic instead of the RMS Titanic. But what's interesting is uh, 2022 is the 25th anniversary of James Cameron's Titanic. And I bring this up because when my mother found out that I was gonna be doing a couple of different presentations this month on Titanic, she gave me this look of, well, you're gonna watch the movie, right? And before I could make a comment, I was reading her face and it wasn't, she wasn't asking me a question. She was actually telling me that we were gonna watch this movie. And so we did and we enjoyed it quite a bit. And I had to point out some few historical things to her, but for the most part, she enjoyed it like many do. But when it comes to Titanic, when we think about some of the passengers, you hear the names of Astor, like John Jacob Astor and his wife, Madeline. You hear J. Bruce Ismay, the president of the White Star Line, or perhaps Thomas Andrews, who was the designer of the ship. And who could forget Margaret Brown, also known as Molly. After the sinking of Titanic, she actually ends up on another ship that gets into the same situation. And from there, she's known as the unsinkable Molly Brown. We also know the events leading up to the sinking, April 5th, excuse me, April 15th, 1912, 2.20 in the morning, the RMS Titanic sinks to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. But for me, it's all the other names and faces that we do not always hear a lot about. And that's not just the passengers, but it's also some of the crew members. And so from passengers to crew, they came from a variety of countries. They came from England, Finland, Norway, Italy, Germany, Russia, Haiti, Egypt, Mexico, Uruguay, Canada, United States, Spain, Cuba, Peru, Bolivia, China, Hong Kong, Argentina, Syria, Japan, Scotland, Ireland, and several others. So when we think of the story and the events of Titanic, again, this is an international story that affected people across the globe 110 years ago and again in 2022. So this is what most of this program is gonna be spent on is on some of those names. And I will tell you that it's been kind of hard to figure out exactly which stories that I were able to share with you today. Some of these, as I mentioned before, you may have heard. Others, you may have not. But let's see, and I hope that you enjoy um, learning about some of these people. So we're gonna start in our first class. And many of the first class passengers um, came from money. They inherited or they had big um, corporations or family money. So we're going to starting with Richard Norris William II. Now he is traveling aboard Titanic. He's coming back from vacation with his father and he's going to be headed back to the United States. And you'll notice that there is a big H on his chest. Richard Norris William II was going to be entering into his first year at Harvard University. And he is a tennis star. But sadly, during the sinking of the Titanic, he was one of many who actually jumped into the water as the ship was going down. Now, unfortunate for Richard Norris William II, he actually had to watch his father lose his life right in front of him because the story goes that as one of the funnels came down, 
his father was one of many who was caught underneath. But for William Richard Norris II, he was uh, floundering in the water for several hours until he was finally pulled into a lifeboat. Then aboard Carpathia as the doctors are checking him out, hypothermia had kicked in as well as frostbite. And he was given the sad news that his legs would have to be amputated. Well, Richard Norris William II was very adamant that his legs must stay. And he worked every day from the time he came off Carpathia until entering into Harvard to get his legs running. And he did. Two months after the sinking, he played in a tournament outside of Boston with another tennis star, Carl Bear, who was also um, survived the sinking of the Titanic. Um, and then from 1913 to 1926, Robert's tennis career skyrocketed. And I'm gonna get tongue-tied telling you all the different awards he won. But starting with the intercollegiate singles title in 1913, 1915, then he won titles in doubles in 1914, 1915. Um, again, he won the U.S. National Singles Championships. He won awards in mixed doubles. He was also a gold winner, brought a gold medal winner at the 1924 Olympics in mixed doubles with Hazel Hotchkiss. And then his career comes to an end in 1926 by winning back-to-back -back titles in men's double. So our tennis star from the Titanic. And here's another image of him um, at one of those championships as well. Now, we also mentioned there were a number of passengers uh, from various countries in Central and South America. So this is Don Manuel Urchtura Ramirez, and he was a businessman, and he had been in Europe attending a meeting, and he was on his way back home. Um, he is going to be on the side of the ship that was women and children first. And then if there were no women and children uh, waiting, then the men could get into a lifeboat. Um, on that side, it was said that a young woman um, had told him that she had got separated from his family and he gave up his seat with one request. He asked her to visit his family back in Mexico and let them know that he had done the right thing. Um, and the story goes that this woman actually did go to Mexico and thanked his family for his sacrifice. Now, this is uh, Mary and Elizabeth Lyons, who were Americans from New York City. Um, they were actually um, traveling across Europe. They had stayed in Paris for a number of years. Now, um, their father and as well as husband was to attend the onboard Titanic with them, but he had some last minute business dealings that left him behind. So Mary and Elizabeth are headed aboard Titanic. They're headed to, um, to Mary's son's graduation from Dartmouth College. Now, both women do survive the sinking of the Titanic. And one of the things that we have at the Mariners Museum in part is we actually have the letter that Elizabeth, who is the daughter here, this is a letter that she had written to her friend in French aboard the RMS Carpathia. And what's interesting, it was just a one page letter. We have not only the letter, but we also have the envelope in which it came. And she gives testimony to about what she experienced. And I'm gonna read that to you. Um, part of her letter, she says, and the cries of the dying as it sank, for there are only 700 saved out of 2,000, I believe. Finally, we drifted onto the sea, which by the grace of God was calm like the pond in Brighton for three and a half hours. At four o'clock, we made out a ship in the distance. Men started to row with all their might. And soon we were depicted up by the ship. 
I'll never forget the sunrise. The sky was clear like a glass of water. The sea is calm as a mirror. And this enormous iceberg surrounding us, white as swans. Then all of a sudden, on the horizon, these two stars, but steady stars that didn't fade, and soon appeared as ship's lights. How happy we were, you cannot imagine it. God has shown us a miraculous clemency and mercy towards us. Again, these are the words of Elizabeth Lyons as she writes to her friend. Again, uh, Mary and Elizabeth do survive the sinking of the Titanic. They actually do make it to uh, Mary's son's uh, graduation at Dartsmouth. And then later on another ship, they return to Paris. So the picture that we have here is of Daisy, Frederick and Douglas Speeden. So here's Daisy, here's Frederick, and this is Robert Douglas who went by um, Douglas here. And as you see in this other image here, uh, Douglas never went anywhere without his little polar bear. It followed him into sleeping, followed him into eating as they went around. This family does survive the sinking of Titanic. But what's interesting is that in 1913, Daisy decides that she is gonna write and illustrate a storybook that she gave to Douglas for Christmas. The book is called either My Story or A True Story, Polar, The Titanic Bear. The true story of the toy bear who survived the Titanic. So his mother actually wrote this book from the point of view of the bear, describing European travel, um, describing the sinking of the Titanic and their rescue aboard the Carpathia all through the eyes of this tiny little polar bear. And you can still get this book because I looked it up and this is my copy right here. I um, got this off of Amazon, uh, but it's a wonderful story to read again from the perspective of the bear. Now, I am sad to tell you that Douglas um, actually lost his life several years after receiving this book. On August 6, 1915, uh, Douglas was nine years old and he was struck by a car uh, while they were in New York, um, actually while the family was on summer vacation. Um, and he died a, a few days later, unfortunately. Um, but we love reading this story to children, uh, again, through the eyes of the polar bear. So our next family here is George, Eleanor, and Harry Widener. Uh, George is this gentleman here, Eleanor in the middle, and their son, Harry. Now this family is from uh, Philadelphia and they were actually uh, work, well, looking for a chef who was going to be brought into the Ritz Carlton in Philadelphia. So they headed overseas. Now for Harry Widener, he was a, a graduate of Harvard University. He was a very avid rare book collector. And it was said around 1912 or so that he had over 3,500 rare books in his collection. Now, unfortunate for this family and with the sinking of the Titanic, um, Eleanor is gonna lose both her husband as well as her son in the sinking. Now, she does return to Philadelphia and to pay homage to her son, she actually donates his rare book collection to his alma mater, um, Harvard University. And if you go to Harvard University's uh, website or if you've actually been on the campus before, you may notice that the library at Harvard is named for Harry Widener. This was one of the things that his mother requested when she donated his books. She also uh, requested that they not change the library too much. So as Harvard University has grown over the decades, they simply built around the original um, library 
that was started with his books. And the images that you see here are the ones that are um, held in memory even to this day. We also have the Allison family. So you have Hudson, Allison, Trevor, and Lorraine. Now this family was part of the temperance movement uh, during the early part of the 1900s um, and also worked in the lumber industry. They are on a family vacation and returning from that uh, during the sinking. Now, this is a very sad story as the family members were separated. Um, Lorraine is with her mother and father. Trevor had gotten into a, a lifeboat with, um, for a lack of a better word, his nanny. Um, and they were trying to let Lorraine into a lifeboat, but Allison was so much in distraught of losing Trevor that she originally had put Lorraine into a lifeboat and then took her out. And as they're searching around for Trevor, they, the realization set in that Trevor may be in a lifeboat. But by the time that happened, it was much too late. And so Hudson, Allison, and Lorraine um, are going to go, excuse me, Bess uh, is the mother's name, forgive me for that. So Hudson, Bess, and Lorraine are going to be lost aboard Titanic. And it's been said by historians roughly that Lorraine was the only child in first class to lose her life. But the family, even today in 2022, are buried together at Maple Ridge Cemetery in Ontario, Canada. And as you look down the lines here, you'll see uh, Hudson Allison, who was the father. You have Bess, the mother. You have Lorraine, who was three years old. And you have Hudson here. And Hudson died on August 7, 1929. So now let's head into our second class passengers. And second class passengers aboard Titanic were, some of them were doctors, lawyers, teachers, um, medium-sized department store heads, small lumber companies, other business organizations. So one family that you may or may not have heard of is the Hart family. So you've got Benjamin, you have Esther and Ava right here in the center. And they were actually emigrating uh, to Canada and they were gonna be starting um, a country store. Now, Esther really is very uh, leery of being on board Titanic. She's quoted as saying that it's a slap in the face of God to call anything unsinkable. And she was very fearful that something was going to happen. During the day, while Benjamin and Ava enjoyed the amenities of being aboard Titanic, Esther would sleep. And during the evening while her family slept, she stayed up sewing and knitting, always vigilant and ready in the case of emergency. And unfortunate for being on board Titanic, her worries came true. And on April 15, 1912, she lost her husband in the sinking of the ship. Um, her and um, Ava do eventually make their way to Canada. Then we have the Laurel Shea family. So we have Joseph, his wife, Juliet, and his two daughters, Simone and Louise. Now, Joseph Laurel Shea is of Haitian descent and he was the only passenger or crew member of Haitian descent on board. He had lived in uh, Paris since he was about 15 years old, trained as an engineer. But because of the time period in which he lived and the fact that he fell in love with a French woman, he decided that he was going to uproot his family and bring them back to his home country of Haiti. They were actually on board another ship. But due to some of the rules about having children in the dining room areas at the same time, they just decided that they're just gonna go aboard Titanic. 
and again in second class. Now for this family, as they're making their way to the top decks, they do find themselves on the side of the ship that was women and children only. Now, Juliet, um, who only spoke French at the time, Joseph actually puts her in a lifeboat along with his two girls and tells her that he will catch the next lifeboat and, and just simply steps back into the crowd. And Joseph Larroche, a man of Haitian descent, lost his life aboard the Titanic. I should also mention that Juliet was with child at the time, their third one. She does make it back to France and to her family, and she gives birth to a boy, which she names after his father. So Joseph Larroche and his family. Now, one story that you may have heard of is the Navatil family. So you have Michel Navatil Sr. and his two boys, Michel and Edmund Navatil. Uh, they are from Paris. And for this story, they're going through something that um, was not very common as it is today. Um, he is headed through a divorce uh, with his wife, Marcel. And he decided during his weekend with the boys that he was going to take them on a trip. He did not tell his wife that uh, he was taking his children aboard Titanic and on his way to New York City. To make matters even worse, he is not on board ship under the name Navatil. He actually goes under the name of Hoffman and lists his boys with the last name of Hoffman as well. Well, coming to the April 15th, um, he literally puts his boys into the last lifeboat that is leaving Titanic. Um, sadly, he is going to be lost. Keep in mind that their mother, Marcel, does not know that they're on Titanic, let alone have left the country. She finds out that they are not in country because the boys were on the front page of the newspaper and it had simply listed Titanic orphans. So the White Star Line is going to pay for Marcel to come to New York City to claim her boys. And this was the only image that I was able to find of Marcel with her children. We do know that she did not claim her husband's body. And because of the last name that he is under, the Hoffman, he is going to be buried in a, a mass grave in a Jewish cemetery. Um, and I'm not sure if there was a marker uh, for that particular um, site. But again, she does not claim her um, husband. She does claim her boys by a birthmark that both of them had. And she took her boys back to Paris. Now, if you've seen James Cameron's uh, Titanic, there uh, towards the end, you will start to see this man here, Charles Jockin, who was the chief baker. And what's interesting about Charles um, is that he figured that he, among some other of the crew members, were not going to get off of the Titanic. So what does he decide to do? he decides he is going to drink. And it is said that he fortified himself with alcohol, threw chairs overboard for flotation, rode the stern down as the Titanic uh, sank and was holding on to those chairs. Now he is gonna be treading water for several hours before he is pulled into a lifeboat. Now, once he gets aboard Carpathia, he is in quite um, a bad state. But unlike uh, Richard William II, um, hypothermia did not set into Charles's body. Main reason for that was the amount of alcohol that was in his system. It kept him from getting that frostbite and hypothermia. However, after the sinking, there's going to be inquiries on both American soil as well as British soil. He is going to testify 
as to exactly what he did. And he mentions that I do not believe my head went under at all. I thought I saw some in the wreckage, swam towards it, and found that there was a collapsible boat with officers and about 25 men. There was no room for me. I tried to get on, but was being pushed off, but I just held on as tightly as I could. Now, eventually he goes on to join other vessels. It's said that he boarded a ship called the SS Oregon. Unfortunately, that boat sank in the Boston Harbor. He did survive that, went on to fight in World War II um, on uh, troop transports, and he died in 1943. Now, I also mentioned that this is really an international story because you have passengers coming from all over. And so one of those passengers, her name is Banora Dahir, and she was actually from Syria. Now, she was traveling aboard Titanic with several of her cousins, and they were going to be making their way to Ohio. Now, she does survive the sinking of the Titanic. Um, this image here was one that we found that was of a group of women who are at Ellis Island, and this is Banora here. Uh, again, she's about 14 or 15 years old. Uh, she eventually gets married to her husband, whose name was Michael. Uh, they stayed in Ohio for a number of years before moving to Detroit, where they had about five children. Now, what's interesting about uh, Benoit's story is not so much about her being on Titanic, but really what happens to her and what she does after the sinking. Now, when they move to Detroit, her husband actually gets a job at the Ford Motor Company and he was working in their assembly plant. Now, at that point, they also had five more children. So we're talking about 10 children total. Now, she never returns back to her home country but her husband had somewhat of a gambling problem. And we're looking at, you know, 1915, 1916 or so, but he has somewhat of a gambling problem. And I guess this happened one too many times because I found a reference that she literally marched herself down to the Ford Motor Company, met with her husband's boss, demanded that his paychecks be given directly to her, and they agreed. So I think this is a, a pretty strong woman um, who was able to um, pretty much put an end to her husband's gambling debts. Now, eventually, uh, Banur died. She died on December 3rd, uh, 1970 in Detroit, Michigan. Now, one of the things that we talk about at the Mariners Museum and Park, we do like to talk about um, where people are coming from, looking at immigration from all different points. And the Goodwin family is a prime example of a family who sold everything that they owned to buy tickets aboard a ship to start a new life in a completely new country. Um, and again, we're looking at 1912. Now there's actually eight members of the Goodwin family. There's a young child that's not listed in this picture. But the father, Frederick Goodwin, was an electrical engineer. He's actually gonna be, um, this is a third class story that we're looking at here. But along with their children, Lillian, Charles, William, Jesse, Harold, and young baby, Sydney, left England and they're on their way to Niagara Falls, New York. Um, one of uh, Frederick's brother Thomas is living there and has let them know that there's uh, several job opening at a big power point, a power plant there. So they're moving uh, for this new opportunity. Now traveling in third class, they were actually supposed to be on another ship. But due to the coal strike that was taking place at the same time of the maiden voyage of Titanic, 
Uh, many of the passengers on those other ships, along with the coal, is going to move aboard Titanic. And so they are headed out. Now, unfortunate for the Goodwin family, all eight members of the family perish with the Titanic. And if you've ever had the opportunity to go to Ellis Island in New York, there is a room and a space that's full of children's shoes. And these shoes remind me of all the children that were lost aboard Titanic. But I also bring that up to you because many years after the sinking of Titanic, there were stories coming out from historians, scientists, and anthropologists of a unknown child who had been buried in Halifax, but had never been identified. And throughout the years, um, again, historians, scientists, anthropologists have gone back and forth um, and looking at who they think this child really was. And at one point they had the, they figured out who it was, but there was one particular man who just in his heart was not convinced that they had the right person. So he went back again through DNA, testing uh, family members who were still living. And about five or six years ago, and it may be slightly longer, there was another report that came out that finally confirmed through DNA who the child was buried in this, um, in this grave. And it is Sydney Goodwin, who is the baby who is not identified, who's not shown in this image. And that was just several, as I mentioned, at least six years or more that this child has been identified. I don't know if they changed the marker to reflect that, but it had been confirmed of who the child was. We have Kareen Yosef, who is uh, from Lebanon. And she, as well as many members of her family, is also headed to Detroit, Michigan. Uh, she's on board uh, with several of her children. They do survive the sinking of Titanic. But while they were in New York, her children are going to contract measles and they're going to be hospitalized for a number of months. The family had lots of financial troubles, uh, just, but then they started getting back on their feet. Uh, Corinne's husband had opened up a grocery store and they had lived above it. Now the family had headed off to church and they had left their young daughter. Her name was Mary. They had left her asleep in the apartment. And sad to tell you that there was a fire that broke out in the building. And by the time the family had got back to their apartment, it was in flames and they had lost their daughter, Mary. Uh, Corinne died a few years um, later. She died on June 19th, 1915. And she was buried with another child who it did not survive much longer as well. Uh, her husband lived over a decade longer, and he died in 1926. All right, more third-class passengers. Um, many of the crew members are going to be part of that third class, so that is your larger class that's taking place. So this is second officer um, Charles Lightoller, who I can only describe as a career sailor. He had been at sea since he was 13 years old. He had been aboard a number of different vessels, whether they were passenger ships, whether they were military ships. He was one of the officers in a lifeboat um, as um, they're picking up passengers out of the water. He's gonna testify in courts, both in America as well as in England about what, what happened with the Titanic and then he continues his career at sea. He continued going on passenger vessels as part of the crew. He even joined into the military. He had rose through the ranks of commander. 
And then all of a sudden, World War I breaks out. He's fighting in that. And then later on in World War II, he's in his late 60s. And if anybody has seen the movie Dunkirk, uh, you may remember uh, this scene right here of a small yacht called the Sundowner. And it was uh, contacted by uh, the British Navy to start picking up uh, soldiers from the beaches at uh, Dunkirk, which he does. The Sundowner will only hold 21 people. That was the largest number they had ever held until World War II. It is said that Charles Lightoller had picked up over 130 sailors and soldiers in the water and off the beaches. It is also mentioned that one of the men kind of uh, had a panic attack when he realized that it's the same Charles Lightoller who was on Titanic. And another sailor said, yes, that is Charles Lightoller. If he survived the sinking of the Titanic, we're gonna survive him. We're gonna survive this and we're gonna stay on board, which those men do. Um, sadly, um, he does pass away um, at a very um, older age. I think it was back in the 1920s when he passes. Violet Jessup is another person who spent her life at sea, but she had went out to sea because her friends said it was an adventure and she had been on a number of vessels. Uh, she was aboard, uh, started her career aboard the uh, Olympic, which is the sister ship to the Titanic. Um, she was on board it when the Olympic collided with another ship. And then she gets aboard a uh, Titanic. She survives that sinking. And then she, uh, World War I, World War II hits. She is a nurse in both of those wars. And at some point in time in that around 1915, she found herself aboard the other sister ship for the Titanic, the Britannic, which also sank. Um, she survives all of those things. Um, and she eventually um, gives up her career at sea in the 1950s, and she traveled around the world and before she got married a second time. Now, we also have uh, a number of uh, laborers uh, from China, and there wasn't much known about these men, but there's a lot more information that has slowly started coming out about these laborers. What we do know is that they six of six out of the eight do survive the sinking, but they are denied entry into the United States uh, when the Carpathia arrived. And it was mainly due to the laws that were on the books regarding to those who are immigrating into the country. So they eventually make their way back to their home country of China, which they also had some issues as well. I've got a little bit more for them a little bit towards the end. Now this story right here is one that's near and dear to the Mariners Museum. And this is the story of Leah and her son, Frank. Now her husband, Sam had been living in Norfolk, Virginia for a number of years. And Norfolk is about, a 30 minute drive from Newport News where the museum is. Now he had been living in the United States for a number of years, saved up his money to bring his family uh, to America. They are in third class. They do survive the sinking of Titanic. They are reunited with uh, their husband and father, Sam. And for a number of years, they lived and integrated themselves in the society in New York excuse me, in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, this, this is an image that was donated by the Axe family to the Mariners Museum of Leah and Frank in the 1950s. And they are at the premiere of Titanic starting, uh, starring Barbara Stanwyck. We also have newspaper clippings that Frank had kept of his mother, of her passing, even a letter from a lawyer as she is suing the White Star Line Company. So all of these items and many more images are in our collection about this family. So we have a local connection to the Titanic. 
We also have Bertram and Milvina Dean. Milvina is the baby here, and she was two months old at the time of the sinking of Titanic. Um, they do um, survive the sinking along with her parents. They make their way to Kansas. And as they're making their way, they do return to England. And she, at her young age, is, uh, for a lack of a better word, a movie star. Um, she, everybody wants autographs from the family and over time. But what I find unique about Milvina is that she served her country of England both in World War I, World War II as a cartographer. But, and she um, went around talking about her experiences on board Titanic. Now, Milvina Dean was the last uh, Titanic survivor um, from the Titanic. She died in 2009. So there are no other survivors from the sinking alive. She was the very last one. Even though we have today many people around the world who were born in 1912 still alive today, but she was the very last one. So here's the numbers of uh, passenger and crew members, 2,205 passengers, lifeboat capacity of 1,178. And by the end of the sinking, only 704 passengers and crew had survived. Most of the loss was in the third class. For those of you that like um, having percentages, you have 37% of the first class um, lost, 57% of the second class, 75% of the third class, 77% of the crew, which leaves us with 68% of the people aboard Titanic were lost. But 110 years later, the legacy of Titanic lives on. Titanic is currently um, still at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, about two to three miles down. There are many movies, um, as I mentioned, Titanic with Barbara Stanswick. You've got The Night to Remember, James Cameron's Titanic. And there's even a movie called Titanic 2. We have shipwrecks like the Costa Concordia in 1912 that when it hit that reef, immediate um, references to the Titanic were abound. There is a billionaire uh, from Australia who wants to build his Titanic II. It will look like the old Titanic, but with modern technology. He still hasn't got that ship running yet. There are several places around the world um, who want to build additional museums to the Titanic. This one is in China. Um, I mentioned before that there's much more evidence and uh, research that's coming out. This is a movie that came out at the beginning of last year called The Six. And this is in reference to the six um, Chinese laborers that survived the sinking of the Titanic. And you can see that James Cameron is the executive producer along with the awards that they won in the past year. Um, I haven't been able to find where it's streaming, but I know that March of 2022 was the last time it was um, shown, it was shown in Boston at a festival. And then this is something that my mother just told me about a couple days ago that she saw off of Tubi, that there is a Titanic movie called Titanic 666. It is a horror movie and it premiered on April 15, 2022. She actually watched it. She said it wasn't bad. I'm not so sure, but we'll find out. And that brings me to the end of our forgotten faces of Titanic. Thank you.